Welcome back new this morning. Tackling a troubled spot in San Antonio, Zarzamora Street is one of the city's most dangerous roads. And now help is on the way. The U.S. Department of Transportation is giving a $4.4 million grant to make the street safer. And here to tell us more from the city's transportation department, Tamika Motterville and Joe Conger, familiar Ken Spiper. Hey, hey, welcome. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning to you two. Doing? We're doing great. How are y'all? Wonderful. We're getting four point <laughs> four million dollars. That's a whole lot of yeah, money. A whole lot we of love coins. to hear it. And yes. before we actually get to the solutions, let's just maybe start with the problem itself first. Kind of give us a little bit of context. I mean, I will say in terms of news, we're always reading about something happening on Zarsa Motor Street, you know, the unfortunate side yeah. of it. But tell us about the issue itself. I mean, how bad is it? It's bad. It's bad. Harry and Vanessa, I think the biggest challenge here in the city and just Texas in general, we are one of those states where, you know, we do everything big and sadly we are big in terms of fatalities and injuries on our roadways. And that's not just automobile crashes, but what the U.S. Department of Transportation likes to call vulnerable road users. So cyclists, pedestrians, we are losing hundreds of people annually. And we're getting in the double digits when it comes to pedestrian fatalities and cyclist fatalities and the serious injuries just are exacerbated because of the design of our roadways, the speeds in which people travel. And so this grant is an opportunity for us to begin addressing that on one of the city's, you know, most dangerous, most violent corridors. And Joe, talk to us about how you decided what area to target first and, uh, you, you know, what you're implementing to make it safer. So what we decided uh, is based on our studies and some of the research that we've done in the past. Um, the city manager actually took transportation and planning for transportation out of public work so we could actually focus on these areas with these vulnerable road users. So that's where we came into it and we have identified 10 high injury networks within the city. And it's interesting because in these high injury networks that we have, where we have that, th those pedestrians and those bicyclists who may be struck and we have the conflicts with cars, those 10, dis uh, 10 corridors actually make up, I think, 50% of our accidents uh, mm. that involve, uh, I say accident, we should say crash. Crashes. Mm. Uh, th those are crashes. 50% of them are on those 10 networks. Wow. We have about a minute left, so let's talk about the actual work that was happened. Big changes coming along this. What are we talking about? So we're looking at eight mid-block crossings, and we call these pedestrian refuge crossings. So when you see some of these mid-block crossings today, they don't have greenery, they don't have any shade, they don't have a place for a pedestrian to stand, it's just a concrete island. So we're gonna be adding pedestrian hybrid beacons, giving the pedestrian control to be able to cross and slow down the traffic, stop the traffic. We're gonna have vegetation. An eighth of an acre of green space will be added with these eight mid-block crossings. And it's based on the pedestrian travel, the number of pedestrians, these locations that we selected. We're also going to have illumination at these locations to make people safer. We know these roads are dark. And ultimately, the visual acuity of a driver, you're gonna slow down when you start to see these medians mm -hmm. along the corridor. So when we go back to that safe system, safe people, safe automobiles, safe speeds, safe post-care, that's important, the post-care after these crashes. A lot of times, first responders are injured as a result of responding to many of these crashes. So this approach to making our streets safer is going to be something we model on those other corridors that Joe mentioned as well. And we are running out of time, but real quick, Joe, tell us uh, when can we expect this to be completed? What is this, a two year? Two years. Two years. Two years. Yeah, DOT gave us two years to, to get these things on the roadway and it can't happen soon enough as far as yeah. we can tell. We're looking forward to it. I know you said 56% um, hoping to make that road safer for pedestrian yes. accidents. So. Making our city a better place. Yeah. Joe, Tamika, thank you so much for thank being with you. us. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks, Thank you. All right, we're going to send it right on over to Ryan Shop